Okay, uh, let's, uh, question nine. I need to know what inverse variation means. When you see inverse variation, what equation jumps out at you? Y equals, is it K times X or O? K divided by X. K divided by X, thank you very much. All right, you've been given six comma 16. I think you should use it to find the value of K. Uh, plug them in, plug them in in the correct spots, just like we did yesterday. Plug in the 6 for x, the 16 for y, and find me the value of k. Okay, Mr. Bond gave me the vote of 96. Is that possible? Uh, if you do multiply, you do get a k value of 96. So we have y equals 96 over x. Where do we put the 10? Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. So we get 96 over 10. Nine How much is that? 9.6. I, I yes, go ahead. Yes, you multiply by 16 on both sides. Good question. That's what gives you this the 96 value for K. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we've done all the examples, maybe with the exception of seven, but that's that's pretty much what we did in question nine. Find the all they asked you to do was find the constant of variation. That shouldn't take you more than 20 seconds or maybe 10 seconds to do number seven. We have not. Okay. So if y equals k over x, what's the value of k in this particular situation knowing that the ordered pair 610 is on your graph? K divided by 6 equals 10. What do you got, Mr. Barr? If you plug in 6 and 10. Is that right? That's, is that right? Uh, the K value is the number you have up there. Mr. Barr, did you get it? It is 60. Thank you very much. Right. 6 times 10 is 60. Okay. Question 10. Now we're getting into graphing. Okay. We already graphed the... the uh,
that's like this part right here becomes this part down here. This part that was over here is now up. So when you had a 1 and 3, when it becomes k negative, it switches to 2 and 4. Yes, I'll be chaperoning at prom doing dances. Are you actually chaperoning? Are you chaperoning? Oh. I mean, Mitchell is. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Mitchell is? Yeah. Oh, no, that's so horrible. Okay. No way. Two of the, two of these, <laughs> listen, two of these are ridiculous A and D. Why are A and D not even possible? Why are A and D not even possible? They only have one branch. Thank you, Ms. Frederick. So you cannot possibly choose A or D. Okay, now, I would suggest, if you don't know off the top of your head which one it is, that you make a simple chart. Now, this is going to be an extremely simple chart because we're only going to plug one number in. We'll plug a 1 in. What do you get when you plug in a 1? 8. Okay. So, I'm going to go to choice B and see if that coordinate 1, 8 is on the graph. Okay, so I go 1 over... And I go 8 up, 2, 4, 6, 8. Is the point 1, 8 on the graph? Yep. Yeah. Ding, 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 we found the winner. Weird sound effect, huh? <coughs> 1, 8 on, is not on this graph. If, you are, if you're looking at it, 1, 8, that blue dot does not hit any of the parts of that graph, so that couldn't possibly be it. it. Yes, Mr. Bond. It's quite Correct. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you could think about it like that. Yeah, I guess another way to, to use the same logic you're, you're doing right here is if you go to the right, a positive would go up and a negative would go down. And if you go to the left, a negative. Yeah, that, that would be back to the right. Okay, now, um, Mr. Duncan's asking about this thing over here. We didn't talk about it, okay? X cannot be equal to zero. Why in the world can X not be equal to zero? Because if you put 8 divided by zero... That doesn't exist. It's undefined. It's not even a number. This is definitely inverse, folks. This is not direct because if it were direct, remember as x gets bigger, y is getting smaller. Direct would be as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. Right? That's another thing. The direct one goes through the origin. This one does not. So this is inverse. Definitely inverse. What's the domain of this? Maybe I should go back and ask this question. These two lines that they comes closer and closer to but never touches, what are they called? Asymptotes. What are the asymptotes of this graph? Um, okay, so x equals what? What are the two lines that we get close to but never touch? The x and the y. Yeah, their nicknames are the x-axis and the y-axis. So this one called the x-axis, what's the real name for it? Every horizontal line in the universe is y equals y equals 5, y equals 7. This is y equals 0. Good call. The other one, nicknamed the y-axis, is x equals 0. Now, we talked about domain and range before. And we said that if you're trying to find the domain, you could imagine taking the graph and smashing all the points onto the x-axis 
and doing that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. How much of the x-axis would get covered? So what's all of it except what? Ah, x can be any number in the universe, but not zero. That would be my domain. Hopefully the abbreviation D doesn't throw you off, since we've done that before. So, for the range, push all the points up against the y-axis. All the points forever and ever and ever. You'd have everything except what? Yeah. Ah. Now, isn't that interesting that the asymptotes and the domain and range kind of look similar? So one of them is telling you the lines that you aren't going to ever touch. And one of them is telling you all the points that you can have for X or Y except the asymptotes. Now, the consistency from domain and range to asymptotes is always going to be the same. However, when we start moving these things around, those numbers might change. Okay. Can't be C or D. Good call. It's a positive 8. It is choice A. Good call. Yes, 11.1. Just no, I don't think so. We started with number nine. Yeah, we didn't get to that. And we went. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, so we had a lot of questions. No, yes. No. Okay. So here's our picture. What do you What do you think about the asymptotes? It'd be zero zero. Uh, when you say zero zero, that sounds like a so coordinate. X, right. X equals zero, okay, and Y equals zero, okay. I'll take that. That's good. All right. How about uh, domain? domain and range. Well, no, it won't be the domain, but it's kind of related. The is domain is X does not equal zero. zero. And y does not equal zero. Anything but those numbers. Is the, are those lines touching the, the thing? No, they never touch, according to MZ Hammer. Really? Yeah, his his song his song about the asymptotes. Can't touch this. Scrolling up or scrolling down? Oh, the, the number is y equals 8 over x. Okay, y equals 8 over x. The question below, it says, identify the x-intercepts. Select the correct answer below, and if necessary, fill in the answer box to complete your choice. Where does it cross the x-axis? It doesn't. It doesn't. Good call. What about the Y intercept? It don't. It don't. That's right. And we did the other parts, the asymptotes and the domain and range. I just was checking to see if you uh, would understand or conclude there were no X or Y intercepts for that graph. Hmm. Okay. Pick the correct answer. I, I would highlight for you that this is a negative 12. Well, you know, it's not those two, right? If you go to the right, you must go down. So uh, I think this is your winner right here. That's that same idea, plugging in a 1. If I plug in a 1, I would get negative 12. So that would be going down. What's the domain? Zero. Domain. X cannot equal 0. What's the range? Okay. So whether K is positive or negative, that didn't really matter, did it? 
What about the asymptotes? Man, it's like a broken record. X equals zero, Y equals zero. Whoa, whoa, too far. You did? It was good. It was really, really good. I mean, really I feel like even if someone spoils it, it's actually still going to be so good. Well, I don't want to be the one whoa, doing that. Okay, now. I want to remind you about a different, something we did a long time ago. We took parabolas like this, and we moved them around. I need you to tell me what this does to the parabola. Does it go right five or left five? Ah, we said it is opposite of your common sense. Yeah. Movement on the X is always opposite of your common sense. And what did we say about this? It followed your common sense. So is that, this is the formula we're going to use. Okay, well, that pretty much wasn't the, the point. I, I just wanted to kind of review what we'd done way back when. Now we want to do question 13. Oh, so x minus 5 is one thing. The denominator has to make it go to the left. No. So it's going to go to the right 5. To the right 5. Yeah. Okay. So when I look at this down here in the bottom, I need to know that it went right 5. Yes, but what does it mean? Does it mean up three or down three? Up three. Up three. So. Okay. Now you need to pick the graph in your, in your notes, the notes that you're writing down. Or your grade. Which would go like that. Can you zoom in? I could, or you could... Download it to your computer and look at it right in front of you. Oh, talk to your neighbors, see what they think. Okay. If you need to go to the right five and up three, it could not be those two. They went to the right three and up five. Okay. So... It's, it's one of those two choices right there. Now we have a positive one in the numerator. What does that mean? It is not choice B. It is choice C. Okay. If you take a look at it, you can see that we're in quadrants one and three. Now when we say quadrants one and three, When we say quadrants 1 and 3, we mean relative to the new asymptotes. Right, Mr. Whitaker? Right. So, it's really, now somebody asked me in my fourth period class, well, how do, how do I decide on this, where in the world this graph's going? Look where the red, red lines come together. Those asymptotes come together at what coordinate? What coordinate do they come together in? Five comma three. So really, I just need to find the two, the, the picture that has the asymptotes that cross in the right spot, and then pick the one that has the quadrants labeled correctly. Say that again. Okay, so each one of those marks is worth two. So we have two, four, five. All right, and then two, three. Yeah, you got to pay attention. You're right. You do have to. Okay, what are the asymptotes?
Um, asymptotes are x equals. Ah, uh, that is true. X equals five. And y equals three. Yes. Uh, how about that domain? Hmm. Look at all your other examples. Is it not equal to zero? Not equal to five. It could be anything in the universe, but not five. Folks, because that's the asymptote. And we can't touch that. And then your range is everything except three. Yeah, so I told you they would go together. But when we started moving them around, they the numbers would get different. What's the difference? What's the difference on uh, these two choices, B and D? Okay, so I better be careful which one I choose. Which one is it? It is choice B. Yeah, that would definitely. All right, so what about the range? What's the difference between these two answers? The X and Y, so we better be careful and choose which one. D. Domain goes with X, range goes with Y. If you need a way to remember that, it's alphabetical order. D, R, X, Y. Okay, choose your graph. Choose your graph. Because they're the only ones, according to what we just said, left 8 and down 5. All right. So if the number on top is a positive 10, we do need things in quadrants 1 and 3. That would be choice D. So as we talked about before, Focus on this spot and think about when you go to the right, because that number is a positive, you have to go up. Right? Y equals 10 over. Since that's a positive, that's telling me that it goes up. What are my asymptotes? What are my asymptotes? Ah, there you go. X equals what? Negative 8? And Y equals negative 5. How about my domain? X is all numbers negative 7. Yep. And Y is all numbers Now, it would be interesting if I asked you what's the x-intercept of this graph. Because you can't tell me there isn't one this time. I'm just curious if you could tell me how to find the x-intercept. I probably will not ask you this question on a test, but how do you find any x-intercept in the universe? What do you plug in for y? Every x-intercept in the universe has the same y value. And what would you say? Zero. Zero. That's true. So uh, if I was going to do that, I would have to do something like, ooh, I had it frozen. Okay, zero equals 10 over x plus 8 um, minus 5. You'd have to solve that equation right there, which wouldn't be too hard, right? Add 5, right? So that would be 5 equals uh, 10 Oops, running out of room. 10 over x plus 8. And how do we solve proportions? You'd cross multiply, right? You'd have 5x 
plus 40 equals 10. You'd subtract 40 to the other side and get 5x equals negative 30. And you divide by 5 and you tell me what? x equals negative 6. I'm not going to ask for that kind of question, but I thought I would throw that out there just to see. Um, see what you'd say on that one. Scrolling back up. You're just getting down the asymptotes or the domain and range? All right. Okay. 15. Choose the one. Hopefully, you know that it's going left 3 and down 8. And we do have it flipped. That's all those pieces of information. Now, if I know it goes left 3 and down 8, then I have really two choices. Those are the only two that went left 3 and down 8, not those. But A is not flipped, so it is not that choice. It is choice D. Um, what are the asymptotes? Man, you're ahead of me. X equals negative 3 and Y equals negative 8. Uh, how about my domain? X does not equal negative 3 and the range? Does not equal negative 8. And I think you were reading the multiple choice answers, which is completely fine. You do need to be able to read those multiple choice answers. Any Anybody need that any longer? Okay, you need to do 16. I don't think plugging those numbers in will help you. You could plug in numbers, but I don't think that's really necessary. What if, if the new asymptotes are x equals negative 8 and y equals 3, which way are they telling you the graph needs to move? Which way? Left 8 and up 3. That's what they're telling me with those asymptotes. So can you find one of those four equations that moves left 8 and up 3? That one goes left 8 and down 3. I want left 8 and up 3. Even though they're not lettered, you are correct if you said B, because we'll just call this B, the second one down. But you need to be able to look at that and go, oh, that says left 8. And that says up 3, and then you need to find an equation that says that. Wow. Last question here for today. And then I'll check your notes. And I do want to talk to you about um, our upcoming schedule. So stay with me. The weight in pounds that a beam can safely carry is inversely proportional to the distance d in feet between the supports of the beam. This is true for all types of substances where we're trying to support. It could be a bridge, could be a floor of a building. Hmm. 
for a certain type of wooden beam, the number of pounds is equal to 7,200 divided by the distance. What distance between supports is needed to carry? 1,200 pounds. So 1,200 pounds, we need to solve that for D. Oh, you can, yeah, sure. Six. This is 1,200 divided by 1. How do we handle proportions? We cross multiply. So D is equal to 7,200 divided by 1,200, also known on the street as 6 feet. 6 feet between those supports to carry that 1,200 pounds. Okay.